pretty. Isn't it beautiful? We had a recent rain, one of the first in a long time. And so the log, which is inoculated. See, the pores are so tiny you can't even see them. Yeah. With the camera, but. How are you doing today? You know, my family and I went down to the river because, you know, there's this deep longing in my soul to find joy amid sorrow, despair, discouragement. Some of y'all be on the struggle bus. I spent a good long time in people's emails and they are brutal. There's a lot of really hurting people right now. This is not an easy time of year by any stretch of the imagination, especially for those of you that are suffering persecution for the truth's sake. Some of you, this is your first year where you're standing up against maybe the, uh, traditions that you so inherited long ago and you're finding out that most everything you ever learned about everything is a lie that's a really difficult paradigm shift to go through and some of you are fired up and passionate and you're so invigorated you want to tell everyone you know you're like i found the truth and then those people turn around and they're all like <sighs> they snarl at you they revile you they mock you and you're like i just don't understand we're like actually reading our bibles and we have like a hunger for the word for the first time ever it's difficult, but you know what? We are born to overcome. And for those of you that are experiencing that, hey, I just wanna encourage you. Sometimes you just need to go sit by a body of water, go sit by a bunch of rocks, go outside for a little bit. Because let me tell you, it's a really good place to have the Father love on you in the most intimate and profound and powerful way. And that's where we do it. You know, as we are walking down here, I literally got medicine along the way. Let me show you something in this pocket here. There's these little tiny tails of a turkey. They come crawling out of the trees every so often. Look at this, turkey tails. Now they have these little tiny pores on the back. There's like false turkey tails and stuff that don't have those pores. That's how you know it's the not the good stuff. But this is the treasure. I'm gonna boil this in water for like an hour. It's gonna be delicious. I'm also gonna mix in Yalpon because I found this Yalpon holly on this island out in the Carolinas. I was so pumped. It's a caffeinated plant that's native to North America. <gasps> So good, Yalpon, Holly. Invigorate yourself with a little turkey tail in Yalpon. For me, that's the medicine of the day. And Uznia, the old man's beard. Anyways, I came down here just because I wanted to give a word of encouragement for some censorship. You know what I mean? I've had little videos getting taken down lately, stuff they don't want being shared. And that's just, it's really frustrating. I'll just put it just absolute transparently. They banned me from posting or doing anything for a week. And you realize how quickly that persecution can just drive you to absolute frustration and a level of despair that you're kind of stuck in this world where people don't want you to talk about certain things or people don't want you to be bringing up certain pieces of pertinent information. And that's just an awful feeling. I don't like being muzzled, y'all. And neither should you. Because the truth can never truly be contained. It can be compartmentalized for a season, but ultimately, secrecy always loses. And I'm gonna read from you some of my favorite passages to never forget that. Because as much as you all are suffering that persecution, understand that the word will always be multiplied. It never returns void, just like this little turkey tail. He's sending out his little pores and these spores are propagating all over. Throughout this entire forest, there's gonna be turkey tail abounding and being fruitful and multiplying. And we likewise need to go do similarly. I'm gonna do something that I don't necessarily want to do today, which is go in this water. It's incredibly cold today. I'm cold sitting on these rocks. It's not the ideal thing, but I know by doing so, it's gonna give me the joy that I so desperately seek. And I want you guys to go and do likewise. So we're gonna persevere, no matter the cost. For those of you who wanna see the stuff that gets taken down, I'm gonna put it on my website at snatchedfromtheflames.com. You can find content there. I encourage you, go check it out there and support places where the truth is getting promoted. Do you know what I'm saying, y'all? Here we go, we're gonna read in the book of Luke. All right, Luke chapter 12. Meanwhile, an innumerable crowd of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another. He began to say to his Talmudim, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And whatever is concealed shall be revealed. Whatever is hidden shall be known. So whatever you said in the dark shall say in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear in the inner room shall be proclaimed on the housetops. 
But I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who killed the body and after that are unable to do any more. But I shall show you of whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after killing, possesses the authority to cast you into Gehenom. Yes, I say to you, fear him. And are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before Elohim. But even the hairs of your head have all been numbered. Do not fear, for you are worth many sparrows. And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before men, the son of Adam shall also confess him before the messengers of Elohim. But he that has denied me before men shall be denied before the messengers of Elohim. And everyone who shall speak a word against the son of Adam, it shall be forgiven him. But to him who has blasphemed against the Ruach HaKodesh, the set-apart spirit, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you to the congregations and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Ruach HaKodesh shall teach you in that very hour what you shall say. And someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, speak to my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said to them, Mine, and beware of greed, because one life does not consist in the excess of his possessions. He then spoke a parable to them, saying, The land of a certain rich man yielded well. And he reasoning within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room to store my crops? And he said, I'm going to do this. Pull down my storehouses and build greater and store all my crops and goods there. Then said to himself, Life, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and rejoice. But Elohim said to him, You mindless one, this night your life shall be demanded from you. And who shall own what you have prepared? So is he who is storing up treasure for himself and not rich towards Elohim. And he said to his Talmudim, For this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you shall put on, nor about the body which you shall put on. Life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouses nor granary, and Elohim feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you by worrying is able to add one cubit to his life? If then you are unable to do the least, why do you worry about the rest? Look at the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And I say to you, even Shelema in his esteem was not dressed like one of these. And if Elohim so clothes the grass of the field, which is today here and tomorrow is thrown away, how much more you, oh you, little faith, and do not seek what you shall eat or what you shall drink. And do not keep worrying. For the Gentiles of this world seek all these. And your Father knows you need them. But seek the reign of Elohim and all these shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock. Because your Father delights to give you the reign. Sell your possessions and give in kindness. Make yourselves purses which do not grow old. A treasure in the Shemaim that does not fail where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. So let your loins be girded and your lamps burning and be like men waiting for their master when he shall return from the wedding, that when he comes, knocks, and they open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes shall find watching, guarding. Truly I say to you that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to eat and shall come and serve them. And if he comes in the second watch, or in the third and finds them, blessed are these servants. And know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour the thief comes, he would have watched and not allow his house to be broken into you. And you then be ready for the son of Adam is coming at an hour you do not expect. So you be vigilant, my brothers and sisters, be on guard, live vibrantly and passionately, because even though you suffer persecution, know this, that's the father's good will and intention to give you the kingdom. We are not wrestling against mere mortals here. We are wrestling against an absolute radical intelligent evil, an ancient hate that seeks to steal and kill and devour. But you know what? You are made to overcome and we are made to set captives free. And if they don't listen to your words there, go to the next. Trust me, there's many, many fish in the sea. Keep on fishing, keep on hunting. And when you get a chance, y'all, get into the water. I am telling you, you little ones who are watching this today, pressure your parents like crazy. Hit them up. Be like, listen, I got to go out to the water. 
We got to get in the water. We need to get in the water. And it's cold right now. And people are like, I don't want to. It's snowing. It's frigid. It's like on the edge of sleeting right now. But you know what? That's when we need it most. We need it most when we're feeling down the most. That's our times to overcome. So live vibrantly every single day of your life. Because the days may be evil, but you, a mighty son, champion daughter, ferocious warrior, were born for such a time as this. I'm just gonna run. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, it's a freezing weather dust to the water! <laughs> oh! Wow! You need this in your life! It's excruciating! Every fiber of my being is yelling at me to get out! <laughs> oh! Yes! Ah! Oh! Oh, to tell you it's awesome, but it's not awesome. Oh! 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 You're out of it. That's great. Good. Oh, wow. oh. Oh. My arms are in so much pain. Sharky, I didn't expect my arms to hurt so much. Every time, every time something else hurts different. Like clearly my arms needed a total recalibration. But I'll tell you, instant see I'm already feeling better. Now I feel great. Like, that's the, th that's the whole trade. It's awful in there, you know? It's awful. <laughs> it's a lot less fun when it's cold out. But as soon as you get out, there's like, immediately your body's like, congratulations, good and faithful servant. Now enter into your reward. This is literally like the, the fire of the earthly living and then like the reward of the kingdom. I'm telling you, it's like being born again. It's a real thing, y'all. Immersion's not a joke. You need it in your life. You just, you go in the water, <laughs> you come out and you're born again. You're like a new person. Your family will love you more. Your friends will. People will think you're crazy and it's so good for them because they're boring and they need somebody exciting in their life. So be that spark of enthusiasm. Live dangerously every single day.